is Fitchburg, Massachusetts, founded in 1764, 39 miles northwest of Boston by air, 51 by highway. Population, 45,000, including some of the country's most highly skilled craftsmen. Fitchburg is also the town where a product described as tons of pure precision is made. The product is manufactured here in General Electric's Fitchburg plant. It is a high-speed steam turbine. Perhaps the gentleman facing us can tell us something about these turbines. Excuse me, sir. Sir, excuse me? Yes? Would you mind telling us about the products you manufacture here at Fitchburg? We manufacture high-speed mechanical drive steam turbines. Where are they used? Well, they're used in all types of applications where there's an available steam source. For example, in the electric utility industry, we have steam turbines like this one that drive boiler feed pumps. Then in marine applications, we have turbines that are geared to generators to provide electric power for ship service. We've developed many special turbines for the Navy for this use. And more and more, our turbines are being applied to the process industries, like petroleum, paper, chemical, those industries where a continuous operation is required. Could you tell us a little bit about the turbine itself? Certainly. As I said, these are high-speed turbines. They develop anywhere from a few hundred up to more than 15,000 horsepower. And they operate at speeds up to 12,500 RPM, or even higher for some applications. How about the manufacturing? Is there anything unusual about it? Yes, there certainly is. The amount of precision that goes into the manufacture of these turbines is very, very high. Say, our production people could tell you a lot more about this. Would you like me to give them a buzz so you could talk to them about it? Why, yes, thanks very much. You bet. And after you're through talking to them, drop back here, will you? Hello, Dave. There's a fellow on his way down to see you, and he'd like to find out a little more about it. Yeah, sure, glad to. Right. So long. Pardon me, I was told to see you... Oh, yes. You'd like to see something of what goes on down here. Glad to show you. I understand your turbines have a high content of precision manufacturing. You understand right. These machines are built like a fine watch. A Fitchburg turbine starts out as five or six tons of the highest quality castings, forgings, and metals. The big parts, like the casing, are laid out and machined on our planers and big mills. Other components are rough cut in our burnout room, where we use an electronic tracing machine to assure accuracy. The parts are then machined to precise dimensions. We get maximum flexibility in turbine design because these parts, which are more or less standard, can be assembled in hundreds of different combinations. In this way, we can tailor make our turbines to fit customer specific applications. A great amount of handwork goes into a Fitchburg turbine, and the men doing it are fine craftsmen. In diaphragm assembly, for example, the blades are fitted with such care that this assembly is built with as much accuracy as a precision instrument. There's no machine we know of that can give us the accuracy we require for this assembly. Hand operations like this, by men who really take pride in their work, are what make me say these turbines are built like a fine watch. What do you consider the most precise operation in your manufacturing cycle? That's a tough one. Of course, everything has to work just right when one of these machines goes into service. I guess you might say the rotor assembly is as precise as you could find. The rotor itself is machined within very close tolerances. The dovetails on the wheels and the shaft diameter, for instance, must be within five-tenths of a thousand before the rotor is ready for the next operation. 
Then, if the rotor's application calls for it, it goes to our spray metal machine, where Monell metal is applied to prevent corrosion. After that, it makes its first trip to the rotor balancing machine to be balanced without its buckets. A real good example of the precision that goes into our turbines is the way we band the buckets on the rotor wheel. Each band segment is measured against the buckets it will have to cover. Then the band holes are individually punched to make certain of a precise fit. This banding is another operation where there's no machine that's good enough to replace the skilled hands of an experienced craftsman. As each wheel of the rotor is bucketed, additional balance refinements are made on that wheel. This procedure of bucketing and balancing each wheel assures that the complete rotor assembly is in true balance. After all the buckets are banded, the rotor goes back to the balancing machine where it is balanced to within 10 gram inches. To give you an idea of just how refined this is, if a man placed a dime on one of these rotors after it had been balanced, the operator would be able to measure the weight of the coin and also tell exactly where it was placed on the massive rotor. That should give you some idea of precision. And every rotor that goes through our plant is that accurate. Oh, hi, Paul. Hi, Dave. Say, here's a fellow that can tell you how we make certain that these turbines are right all along the line. Hello. Hello there. Paul, would you mind telling our friends something about the tests you run on turbines? I'd be glad to. We have quality control and test checks all along our production line. As a matter of fact, before a piece of raw material ever gets into production, a sample of it is inspected right here in our metallurgy lab. One of our tests is a destructive analysis to determine the tensile strength of critical metals. We deliberately stress bars of steel well beyond the tensile limits we require. If the materials don't pass rigid inspections in this lab, they never reach the factory floor. In our chemical laboratory, we further analyze raw materials to make certain that they are of the highest quality. Tests we carry out in our metallurgy and chemical labs make us certain that the materials that go into our turbines will do the job they're supposed to do. When we're sure of that, we're ready for production. How about production? What steps do you take to assure quality? Well, let's take the machining of a bucket. It's a good example of built-in quality control. One of the first steps in manufacturing takes place in a specially designed, high-precision, six-station milling machine. The operator places a piece of stock in the carrier on the turntable, presses a button, and the stock automatically moves on to each station, where a special precision machining operation is completed. By the time the stock completes its full cycle, the dovetail and tenons on the bucket meet tolerances of two-tenths of a thousandth. Then the blade contours are shaped on a special milling machine. And the bucket is then polished and inspected before being assembled on the rotor wheel. During this manufacturing cycle, inspection measurements are made at each stage of the process to make sure the bucket meets specifications. But we take bucket quality control a step beyond this in our bucket vibration test room. Here buckets on completely assembled rotors are checked to make sure they have the required vibration characteristics. With measuring equipment for this test, our engineers can locate natural bucket vibration frequencies. Then, with this information, nozzles on the turbine can be varied so that impact bucket vibration frequencies caused by steam do not coincide with natural vibration frequencies. As a result, the chances of bucket failure are greatly reduced. With the data obtained in tests like these, we've been able to virtually eliminate metal fatigue and prolong bucket life. We know more about bucket characteristics here at Fitchburg than any other manufacturer in the industry. Our quality control and test techniques have had a good deal to do with the higher efficiencies and longer life found in Fitchburg turbines. Now, when it comes to the sub-assemblies, we carry out extensive checks to make certain major components function smoothly. We check the valve gear assembly for its hydraulic operation, the nozzle areas, the rotor for its balance. Now, the rotor balancing stand... I already mentioned that one, Paul. 
Oh? Well, well, by the time one of our turbines reaches the final assembly area, just about every one of its parts, materials, and sub-assemblies has been gone over with a fine tooth comb. The major test, of course, is the one of the final assembled turbine. Out in the test bay, our men go over the turbine from shaft to shell. To provide steam necessary for final tests, we've just completed a boiler installation capable of supplying controlled steam at pressures up to 1,800 pounds and at controlled temperatures as high as 1,050 degrees Fahrenheit. This installation is the most advanced facility of its type in the industry. When a new turbine is ready for final testing, all of the design, engineering, and precision manufacturing that went into it are proved out. When live steam is fed into the machine for the first time, the answers to the turbine's fitness don't take long. Shaft vibration. Speed. Bearing pressure. Governor performance. Maximum speed. When a Fitchburg turbine passes all these tests, it's ready for shipment. And when one of our turbines leaves our factory, we know it's as good a machine as can be built. If it doesn't pass our quality control and operating tests all along the line, it never leaves our plant. Well, thank you very much for explaining some of the things that go on here at Fitchburg. Don't mention it. Glad to any time. So long now. Well, hello again. Did you get a good look-see at our plant? Yes, I did. Thanks. Well, what did you think of it? Well, I'll tell you. If I were selling these turbines as you are, I'd have no worry about their quality. Well, I don't. But I'd like to correct your observation about what we sell. You see, we don't sell turbines. You don't sell turbines? Well, what I mean is we, we deliver more than just a turbine to our customer. We furnish him a method of producing power in the form of mechanical energy, which he must use for his manufacturing process. And we call this energy profitable power for three reasons. First, because it performs a, a very essential job for the customer. Second, because it is low cost. Since the steam used in the regular manufacturing process is also used to drive the turbine. See, it's just a matter of using the same steam twice. And finally, we call it profitable power because it is dependable. All of the precision manufacturing that you've seen in our plant is our way of assuring our customer that these machines will meet his needs reliably for years to come. Well, thank you very much for an interesting visit. I don't mention it. It was my pleasure. That's the story of the small steam turbine and of some of the men responsible for it. It's our report from Fitchburg.